Hey, welcome back to Twin Cities Live on this Monday. Ben is out at the auto show, so I'm hanging here by myself. But don't worry, you're going to get plenty of Ben Lieber fun in just a second. In late February, 175 Twin Cities Live viewers joined Ben and me on this tropical adventure to Hawaii. What a trip. It was all arranged by Minnesota-based Carousel Travel. So for five nights, we stayed at the five-star Fairmont Orchid Resort. Some who went on the trip with us even extended their trip. They were brilliant. They spent extra time on the islands of Oahu and on Maui as well. This trip really was a total dream, and I'm so excited to get to relive it. All this week, you're going to get to see our journey, starting with a stop at a coffee farm making some of the best java we've ever had. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Well, hey, gang, we are getting a special treat. We are at Kona Joe's. And the coffee's excellent, and the view is amazing. It's unbelievable. You know, you and I have a lot of things in common, Ben, but our love of coffee is probably at the top of the list. And so getting to come to the place where they're growing the coffee cherries, and then they're roasting the beans, mm -hmm. and uh, they're doing it all in a specific, really beautiful way is so cool. And this is, like, just what I needed. And this is fantastic. It is so right? good. So we're going to get to learn all about how this coffee is grown and uh, what they're doing here at Kona Joe's. And um, I couldn't be happier about the whole situation. Check out these views. Unroasted coffee, dried to 10% humidity. It is uniform in size, uniform in weight, ready for roasting. Okay, Joseph, you're just riveting everybody with tales of growing this coffee. This is such a cool place, and we're learning so much about how coffee is grown. Tell me about how much you're producing here and what makes Kona coffee so special. Well, we produce on average about 50,000 pounds. It sounds like a lot. It's not. Mm -hmm. We run out every year. Most of Kona, Kona does run out. It's a limited uh, crop and it's also high demand. All of Kona is hand picked, hand processed. Everything from the picking the, uh, the ripe cherries at their optimal sweetness all the way to roasting them and actually putting them in the bag ready for sale is all done by hand, and so that quality really comes through. Are you guys roasting everything here? Because I walked past what looks like big roasting machines. We have all of our commercial roasting is done on premises in our larger roaster. I loved learning that the harvest season is different from a lot of things that in Minnesota we're used to. You know, you get one season, you gotta harvest everything within a couple of weeks and get it in. That's but correct. it's a slower process. Very slow. Coffee ripens at a slower pace. This looks more like a vineyard to it me. It is a lot like a vineyard because it is a perennial tree. It does produce once a year. Here we have the Goldilocks zone. It's not too hot, not too cold, not too wet, not too dry. And so it's just ideal temperatures year round, ideal sun exposure and ideal uh, humidity, moisture. So it's perfect place to grow coffee. It's the Goldilocks zone for coffee beans and also for human beings. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm feeling the same way. Good. Joseph, this is wonderful. Thank you so much for oh, having my us pleasure. today. And aloha. Aloha. All right, Elizabeth, we just left Kona Coffee Company. We got highly caffeinated, so really good. fun tour to learn about that. Now we are at a spot where we are going to get our chill on. <gasps> oh, oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Kona what, Brewing. What else are you hiding back there? Well, I scrolled away a few other things. You know, we'll do that off camera for all the things I can just keister in here. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't even want to know. This is awesome. Okay, you know. know what I love about this? I'm so excited to try the beer, but I love their branding. Like, I'm a real sucker for oh, a yes. good-looking Good label. Or a bottle. It's so great. So we're going to get to know some cool things about Kona Brewing Company. We're going to try some beers. We're going to have a little lunch. It's time for these tea. CLRs to loosen up a little bit. I'm here with Jen from Kona Brewing Company, and Jen, this place is awesome. The vibe is great. Facilities look super fun. I saw all the food. What what makes this place so special? How long have you guys been here, and what makes you guys unique? Awesome. Um, well, we started the company in 1994. It was Cameron and his son Spooner came out. They used to be surfers from the mainland and they would come out and they're like, something's missing here. So they decided they wanted to start their own brewery out here. So they started the brewery in 1994 and about four years ago, they started kind of expanding in the brewery. They wanted something that was, something that Hawaii hasn't seen before, which is sustainability. So they wanted something that was good for the community, good for the island, that wasn't gonna take up so much pollution or anything like that. So they decided to open this amazing multi-million dollar brewery down the road. Um, 
The entire thing is powered by solar panels. We have a water system that basically recycles all of the water that gets used in the facility. That's got to make everybody just really happy and feel good about the product that they're buying, not only supporting just the, the local economy, but you're taking care of the land because the people of Hawaii really care about taking care of the ground that they walk they on. They do. It's it's very sacred and we try to like stay within the boundaries of what this island is about. I'm so curious to go on the, the big tour to see what's going on and how the whole process is made. What's something that when people see that tour that they're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that's how they do it. Yeah, I think it's everything that goes into account to can of beer, a single beer. Everything from the process of mashing the malt and barley and getting it into the silos and getting it brewed out and then getting it into the cans. It's, it's just a whole process that you get to see and it's pretty amazing. All right, Jen, awesome. you're outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Aloha. It. Aloha. Oh my gosh, so much fun, Ben. I'm like loving reliving this trip. And I've got uh, Kona Joe's coffee right here. Our photographer, Seth, who's our resident coffee snob, he brewed this for me. I know you're so jealous. And I got to tell you, it tastes better today than it did when I was drinking it on the Big Island. It's so good. Yeah, I believe you, and I Sorry. wish that I, I'm empty-handed. <laughs> I know. Oh, I got, oh, I got, Maybe. I got a few notes, and I, I, yeah, these aren't from Kona. I know this is really good. We'll have um, maybe Seth can brew some for you tomorrow. You know what was fun too about Kona Brewing Company that I learned when I was there is that the Kona beer that you can drink here on the mainland is brewed on the mainland. They're not like brewing it there and sending it over, and it's made according to their specifications. So that does mean though that they're something kind of special. You know how they say like the bagels in New York are different because of the water. Like it's sort of the same deal with right. the beer um, when you're on the big island and they have more varieties that you can't get here on the mainland. So it's totally worth going. Yeah, it's totally worth uh, making the, the long distance trip just for the beer because the beer is really, <laughs> really good that you can get there uh, in Kona. I, the thing that I kept freaking out about, about with Kona Joe, was he's like, look, I'm going to give you a little secret. It doesn't matter the type of bean, where you get the bean, the type of roast. If it's not 170 degrees when you brew it, 185. It's Didn't not he say very 185? Good. Oh, 185. 185. 185. That's what it is, 185. Yeah. Yeah, that was the, that was like the magic number. Like you have to do that or else it, you can buy the most expensive bean in the world and it's not going to taste very good. Optimal brewing temperature, 185 degrees. All right, Ben, uh, so much fun. Tomorrow on Twin Cities Live, our tropical adventure on the Big Island continues when we go line dancing. And Ben ropes in quite a steer, although I roped in something priceless, Mike. Don't you remember this? So you remembering that? You're going to see that <laughs> coming up tomorrow. And we're already gearing up for our next trip with Carousel Travel. It is going to be so much fun. It's this September, and there's still time to join Kelly Hansen in Iceland. This trip is September 17th through the 25th. Among the many highlights, a snowmobile safari adventure, a three-hour whale-watching excursion, and hopefully what will be a spectacular view of the Northern Lights. Bucket list trip here, my friends. Space is limited on this soft adventure trip. To see the full itinerary, head to TwinCitiesLive.com and click on events and if you want to join Kelly connect with the team at Carousel Travel you can book your spot today guaranteed you're going to have a great time okay